22 weird boss battle ideas in Mario Maker 2. The bosses I have the most fun fighting against are the ones that are unique and customized. By taking regular enemies and giving them boss powers, you can make creative and weird bosses that are so much more memorable. Today, we will see 22 boss ideas that do not use Boom Boom, Pom Pom, Bowser, Bowser Jr., or any of the Koopalings. Thwompador, the only friendly Thwomp, tells Mario that Blue Toad is still trapped by evil Luigi. He says someone named Toadette the Inventor is the only one who can save him. The problem is that Toadette traveled to another dimension to stay safe from evil Luigi. In case she needed to be found, she hid 22 fragments of a relic that powers the portal to her safe dimension and left a cryptic list of where to find these pieces. Mario needs to defeat each boss on the checklist to retrieve the fragments and power the portal. Mario heads off on his quest, excited about the first encounter with a creature named Happy. When he arrives, he finds a Wiggler steaming in rage while piloting a fire clown car. Big fire spheres charge up and spit out towards Mario as he attempts to wall jump and bounce on the Wiggler. If he times his jump correctly, he can reach the ceiling to hit POW blocks. Each time he successfully hits a POW, a muncher gets destroyed from the stacks on either side of the arena. When Mario hits all six POWs, he gets the key from Happy's Muncher safe and escapes with the first relic fragment. Mario enters the tomb of Mummy Pokey to find the next piece. This Mummy Pokey is mind controlled by Tiny Pokey, who is completely protected inside of the wall. The Mummy Pokey lives beneath the ground and uses tracks to rise up and attack Mario. He also has a fire piranha on his head to spit flames when he appears. Mario takes the opportunity to spin jump on the beast and hit question mark blocks above. To make the Mummy Pokey appear in different areas of the room, Mario can hit on-off blocks which will trigger off-screen two-state tracks. Once all four question mark blocks are hit, the piranha plants that block the pathway are destroyed and the Koopa can drop a muncher onto the Pokey boss, giving him a key to the next relic piece. Goombro the Goomba takes on Mario next. Goombro is a giant winged Goomba with a giant muncher hat that moves and jumps around the arena. Two blast Mecha Koopas bathe in lava and shoot homing missiles at Mario to protect their Goomba ally. After evading the boss and bullets, Mario has an idea to use the missiles for his own benefit. Mario guides the red bullets towards Goombro by letting them chase him and then curve back towards the center. He times the explosion perfectly to defeat the Goomba and get the key to the next chunk of relic. Mario faces off the Sumo Commander and his army. The Sumo Commander is a Sumo Bro that is protected in a bunker of one-way gates with a Muncher and bob as a shield. Hammer Bro minions drop out of pipes that are open to assist with more painful hammers. Mario hits question mark blocks to trigger on-off switches, which makes the pipe on the opposite side of the arena open. When Mario hits all four question mark blocks without dying, he drops a giant muncher weapon to defeat the commander and grab the relic slice. The next arena houses a beast with three heads named Hydrana Plant. Mario needs to dodge giant fireballs while waiting for a POW block to move on a conveyor belt and bounce up on note blocks. When Mario throws the POW, the munchers above are destroyed, revealing more mini fire piranha plants. With more projectiles to dodge, Mario moves quickly to grab the POW blocks and avoid damage. After three POW hits, Mario defeats all three heads of Hydrana Plant and scores the fragment. Mario battles against Mortar Mole, a huge angry Monty Mole with three fast cannons as headgear. Mario wall jumps swiftly to get on top of these deadly weapons while avoiding Zappa Mecha Koopa lasers and red cannonballs. If he's not careful, he can also be smashed into walls or run over by Mortar Mole. Mario carefully hits question mark blocks on the ceiling. When he hits all four, an on-off switch triggers and grants Mario a spicy fire flower. One sizzling fireball to Mortar Mole's face defeats this boss and gives him the relic piece. Mario dreads the next encounter against circus performer Thwompo the Clown. Mario is in an arena where Thwompo doesn't kill him directly by smashing, but instead pushes him into dangerous spike traps and piranha plants on the edges of the arena. Mario needs to trick Thwompo into smashing down into an on-off switch to make a P-switch appear and then smash down and trigger the P-switch. Stars fly in the air, giving Mario the last laugh against Thwompo and gaining him a sliver of relic. A creature named the Sky Saboteur is up next. 
There's no floor in this deadly fight, just seesaws to move across while dodging hot orbs. Mario tilts the seesaw to the perfect angle and then jumps up to hit an on-off. Because the on-off is now blocked, he moves across the arena to find an open one. After two on-offs are hit, a spiked shelmet drops from a pipe. Mario can use his protected big brain to slice the Sky Saboteur and grab the fragment. bob Om tom sounds like a friendly fellow. Mario thinks he might be able to negotiate for the relic piece in this one. When he enters the arena, he's immediately running on a conveyor belt over molten cherry juice while parachuting bob Oms drop overhead. Mario swiftly jumps on a bob Om to ignite it, pick it up, and throw it through a bumper on the side. If he does this correctly, it will trigger an on-off switch. Mario almost loses his footing as the conveyor belt suddenly switches. When Mario gets enough bob Oms into the sides, a P-switch activates destroying bob Om Tom and releasing the captured relic piece. Mario enters a frosty arena against Cloud Bones. His goal is to hit a POW block above, but he needs to dodge flying bones and a spooky boo circle. When Mario jumps up and hits the POW block, nothing changes. He needs to think of a different strategy to defeat this boss. Mario figures out he should spin jump. He shatters the cloud bones and makes the boss crumble out of the Lakitu cloud. Mario steals the cloud and soars into the POW block to destroy cloud bones and take his fraction of the relic. Mario feels like the next boss named the Slow Scoundrel should be easy to defeat. He enters a small arena with a floor made up of donut blocks and hard blocks alternating, patrolled by a lethargic spiny. Mario avoids spikes that shoot downward at him from winged spinies while moving left and right in the arena. When he gets near an unreachable thwomp to the left, it triggers an on-off switch and opens a path down for the thwomp on the opposite side. When he has done enough laps while avoiding damage, the thwomp on the right smashes a P-switch, allowing stars to pour into the arena. Once he walks into the slow scoundrel, he takes the precious fragment. Mario battles the Big Zappa Squad. The leader of the squad holds the valuable item he seeks. His mission is to hit on-off blocks to open the pathway and bonk a shelmet upward toward the captain of this trio. Mario dodges giant laser beams and carefully navigates his way around the arena moving only when they're recharging their Mecha Koopa juice. On the third attack, his Shelmet missile destroys the Zappa leader and he gains another relic piece. Mario has heard this next boss hires minions to do all of the battling for him. The Thwomp boss named the Delegator hides in the wall to watch Mario be destroyed. In this arena, flying spinies launch pointy projectiles while Mario moves to activate exclamation blocks. When he ground pounds them, the block extends him upward and allows a bullet blaster to shoot out a spike ball to trigger an on-off switch. Mario evades the enemies and their bullets as he falls back down to the bottom of the room and scurries to the other side. If he can alternate sides five times, a POW block will jump up into the room and Mario can throw it to destroy the delegator and pillage his relic bit. The next boss sounds so cute and cuddly, Mario can't wait to meet Fluffy. He enters the arena and sees a winged giant spiny in a Lakitu's cloud. Winged parabeetles come out of pipes while winged spinies shoot spikes across the entire arena. Mario jumps on a winged parabeetle to ride it up to the ceiling. Four POW blocks are placed in the ceiling that Mario needs to tactfully access with his parabeetle vehicles. After all POW blocks are hit, the munchers that were blocking the center top are destroyed and a fire flower drops down. Fire Mario can drop a donut block down to make an opening and then burn Fluffy to a crisp to secure the next relic piece. Mario loves to laugh, so he's ready to face the Piran ha ha has The Piranha Pit has fireballs constantly hurling towards him and Koopas that drop down from a pipe. Mario can hit the Koopa and direct its shell to the side to hit an on-off switch. By doing this, he can get a POW to appear in the top center that he needs to jump off of a Koopa to reach. When he hits it, he damages the Piranhahahas. The longer this battle lasts, the more danger enters the arena. Bullet blasters shoot bullseye bills and a giant lava bubble falls onto a track overlapping with the ground underneath Mario's feet. Once the final piranha plants are destroyed, Mario triumphs and grabs the fragment. Mario faces off with the stump jumpers. These unchained chomps bounce around wildly trying to bite Mario. He has to ride on the stump they protect on their back and jump up to hit on-off switches. Mario can time his jump perfectly to crunch one of the stump jumpers in the two state blocks below. 
once he block attacks both of them, he leaves the stump in peace and takes the relic piece. The Plant Gang wants vengeance for his fallen piranha friends and has prepared a deadly welcome gift for Mario. Vines appear from note blocks on tracks that he must cling onto for the entire fight while fireballs fly. If he can climb to the top left while the vines are moving, a thwomp will hit an on-off switch. Mario must do this twice to get a POW block to drop on the right side ceiling. Each POW hit damages the baddies, but adds more damaging enemies into the fight. Bullet blasters drop in first, then Zappa Mecha Koopas appear. With some impressive moves, Mario hits enough POWs to defeat the plant gang and attain the sliver of relic. It's time to battle the cactus monster. Mario moves through a dungeon and avoids spiky tendrils from the cactus monster. He clears a path for himself with the cape and Koopa shells before hitting an on-off switch. Suddenly, the next room bursts open and the auto scroll pushes him forward as he runs and dodges the spiky hands. Yoshi joins the fight in the next phase. Mario and Yoshi spit a shell through the damaging arms and eat some fingers before triggering the next switch. The final room opens and they encounter the brains of this operation. Yoshi eats with ludicrous speed. When they devour the head of the pokey, Mario gets the relic piece and they can escape. Mario enters Thwomp Castle and battles against King Thwomp. King Thwomp is protected by smaller Thwomp minions on tracks that damage Mario before he can move through. Mario has to use lifts and avoid the skewer to inch towards these enemies. The only way forward is to trick the Thwomps into attacking downward into the spicy sludge. When Mario disposes of all the minions, he can force King Thwomp to ground pound into the bubbly lava and release the relic bit. The plant posse fortified itself in anticipation of Mario's arrival. Mario enters an icy arena with three slippery pipes as his only ground. Icicles fall to damage Mario and buzzy beetles pop out of a pipe to attack. Mario can jump on the buzzy beetles to pick them up and throw them through a bumper to destroy one piece of the plant posse at a time. If he waits for a bit with his last throw, he can hit the flying piranha plant when it lands and achieve victory to secure the fragment. Pokenokio wants to be a real plumber, so he decides to prove himself by beating Mario. Instead of fighting Mario himself, Pokenokio uses spike balls out of a pipe to roll into Big Red. Mario ground pounds the seesaw overlapped with a bridge at the perfect time to launch the spike balls upward. When he launches them correctly, the spike ball will damage Pokenokio and roll into an on-off switch. The on-off changes which pipe launches spike balls, so Mario remains vigilant. As the fight goes on, bob bombs drop down and explode, opening up more pipes and allowing even more spike balls to rain into the arena. Mario has to manage three spike balls at once, and he catapults his final weapon to destroy Pokenokio and grab the relic piece. The Mole Brothers cling on to the final relic piece. These brothers create a stack combined with a muncher and a bullet blaster. Mario needs to dodge the wrenches from the rocky wrench and bullet bills that launch out periodically. Mario can climb to the top of this deadly stack and cautiously jumps to hit the on-off switch above. Mario needs impeccable timing because he will only get enough height when Monty Mole is at the top of the slopes. After a few hits, a piece switch is triggered and Mario can trick the Mole Brothers into falling in the boiling goop and giving him the valuable fragments. Mario is now able to combine all of the fragments and the portal to Toadette's dimension starts to activate. The entire room shakes as Mario steps closer to the dimensional gateway. He steps inside and suddenly the world disappears around him. 